Okay, uh, we're going to do uh, lesson six in module C, and that is um, David Jansen's design and painted by Gabby Hunter. And it's this one right here. And I've made my background color, and I've uh, covered, painted my background in, and then I've also um, traced on my pattern. And for this video, we're going to uh, start out with this part, which is the wash. And I'm doing this a little differently because I'm not going to mix up all the colors in advance. But let's mix up our toner because this toner we're going to use for every thing all throughout the painting. So we need some raw umber and that's my raw umber is a little difficult to get out so it's probably going to spurt out here. Okay I'm going to kind of make this a large amount. So we need raw umber and we need naphthol red. Now I don't have proportions here on my updated lesson but I do know that it is a rule of thumb that if it doesn't give you proportions then the one that has the most that you use the most of is first and then on down the line. So I'm going to put some naphthol red out here but I'm not going to put quite as much of the naphthol red that I did of the burnt umber. I'm sorry, raw umber. It's a little, just a little bit less. And then a little black. So we'll just put... Now by now in Module C you can trust your instincts and make your mixes and if you like what you see go with it. If you don't then mix it a little differently. So let me grab my palette knives. I was cleaned up my spot yesterday and now I can't find anything. Okay. So that might be a little bit more black than I need so let's just go ahead and mix these two together first. Make sure that you are seeing what I'm doing. This looks a lot to me like our background color and if I would check myself which oops, I will do I'll see if it is the background color almost our background color is naphthol red carbon black and dark primer so the difference here is the uh, raw umber okay so I've mixed those two together now I'm going to pull some black in And I pulled about half of what I had out there and I think it would be about the equivalent of a touch of given, whoa, <laughs> given the piles I started out with. Okay. Well I think I might just pull a tad bit more into it. Not a whole lot. Make that just a little darker because I don't think it did much at all the amount that I put in at first because it was such a small amount but I do see a, a value change here okay I think um, I think I may call that good if I decide down the road that I need it darker I can always mix it darker okay so I'm going to need to put that into a wet palette. Let's see if I've got one clear. Um, pretty much. This is a wet palette for something else. I don't quite remember what it was. But oh, I know it's the Gabby's Hummingbird class in the AAO online. But I'm going to go ahead and put. Um, my toner in here. What I'm doing is wetting down my paper towel to make sure that it is wet enough. And I'm going to go ahead and put these colors into this wet palette because 
there's room to share. Okay. Oh. Got into that black, didn't I? Hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> whatever that is now, that's dark toner. And I think what I'll do is I'm just going to put it on my palette right next to the toner that I mixed in case I do decide that I need some darker toner. Okay, so, got that. Now I'm going to put some toner out on my palette because I need to use it to make the color for our first wash. And hold on because I've dripped some water onto my piece and I don't want to, I don't have it protected with the anything yet so I don't have any glaze medium on it yet. I don't think. I don't remember because it was a couple of weeks ago that I did this. Anyhow, let's mix our first um, our first wash. So let me find the right page. It's been a while, it's been a couple of weeks since I did some taping, and I did a whole bunch, and now so now I'm kind of like out of taping persona. So I'm kind of um, struggling here at the beginning. So, let me find my right page. It would be number page number four of eight. Okay, and I'm going to take some toned raw sienna. So, I'm going to put my raw sienna out here. And I'm going to mix some toner in with it. And this takes our raw sienna down a value. It also takes it down in intensity. It's not quite as bright. Okay. I'm gonna go, go ahead and mix the rest of that toner in it that I had put out here. Because I think that I wanted it I want it to be less bright. Okay, so that makes it kind of a pretty color. Um, I'm going to have to remember that one. So this is toned raw sienna. And I'm going to um, test it on my surface first before I call that done. Because I may have um, dulled it down a little bit too much. So let me get my trusty filbert brush. I'll start with a six. I'm going to wet it. Let me darn, that's flat. Okay. <laughs> well, there's an eight. And a six. Alright, let me load my six filbert. Okay, and I also need to load it in water because this is supposed to be a wash. And I have trouble with water and washes, so I may end up with a using an extender. But I'll try to do it right the first time. Okay, so I'm going to um, use my photo as my guide, and I'll, I'm actually going to wash in all of the elements with this washy color. Now that looked pretty darkly toned to me on my white palette, and I was afraid that it was too dull, but now that I put it down here, I see that it's okay because it is still quite a bit lighter than the background. As 
so you always want to test your mixes against your background because it's going to look different on that white palette than it does on your piece. Now this is very transparent, very uh, thin washy color. much over here. Okay, there's my birds. And I'm going to come down here and start on this flower. Go and reload, keeping it transparent. You can see, now you see where I have a problem with the water. Plus I think this filbert is ready for the scrub, scrubby brush station. <laughs> I think it's about had it. I go through filberts really quickly as they are my workhorse brush. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, fill in all of this, of the areas of, the, of our design with this washy toned raw sienna. And then we're going to erase our pattern lines. After we erase the pattern lines, then we will glaze over the whole surface. Please don't do your glazing before you erase the pattern lines. Now I'm seeing that some of that, as I've gone over the flower here, that my uh, raw sienna color has gotten too dark. So I either have to put more paint on or I have to add a little more raw sienna into my mix. It seemed to do okay for the birds, but down here on the rose, not quite bright enough. By going over it in a second coat, then I can do that, but um, I've got to be careful not to make it too opaque. So if uh, you find that your uh, washy color here is not bright enough, then go ahead and add some more raw sienna back into it. Okay, I'm not going to make you uh, sit and watch me paint in the entire design in this manner because I know you know how to do this now. And if you didn't, then just do what I'm doing throughout the entire pattern change brush sizes when you need to. You know, basically it would be better to use maybe a liner or a small round for some of these places right here. And just use the brush you need to use. Um, I wouldn't use a flat because the filbert has that round edge and makes your edges out here um, better when we're doing this kind of uh, underpainting. This is what we're, it's called that we're doing here. but feel free to use rounds and liners where you need to where the size of the pattern element dictates it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to erase my lines and then I'm going to glaze it and then we'll be back for the next video.